his story is I don't want to climb the tallest mountain in the world. I just want to be king of the hill of my yard. I want to be able to catch him just good enough to pay the bills. That's a rare story that's told. And there's a lot of men and women that just want to fish enough to pay the bills. That's right. Just And there's a lot that do. Hey, y'all, it's the Fishing Business Podcast. I'm your host, Angie Thompson, and this is part two of my interview with Leanne and Gerald Swindle. If you listened last week, you know that I sort of got to the middle of this and thought, there's too much great stuff here to try to cut something out to make this be more timely and more along the lines of what people would like to listen to. So I broke it up into two parts. And uh, and this is part two. If you haven't listened to part one, I recommend you go back and listen to that first. But if not, dive in here with us, y'all. This is really good. I can't wait for you to hear the rest of the interview. So here we go. You know, from the years of working with you, Gerald, and, and you know, we did, I don't know if people remember, if, if people remember the show Bass Tech. Um, they still, but, seriously. They still what? ask me. Oh, they asked me, hey, what? Where's Bass Tech? When's it coming back? And I'm like, well, it's gone, brother. Lord have mercy. That was a hard show to do, wasn't it? All right. I tell people, I said, you have no idea how many people were behind the scene, the long hours to get that done. I said, that was a lot. But it was a, but it was a great, I mean, it was a great show, I thought. And I learned, you know, very quickly during that process that you were an extremely creative guy. And uh, when I couldn't come up with an idea, I could call you. And I still, to this day, sometimes call you and say, I can't think, think help me figure this out. Leanne, how do you, how, I know you're creative too and very sensible and practical. Maybe a little more sensible and practical than your husband. But um, so how do you, how do you get involved in that process? Uh, I, I'm not creative. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you that right now. I wish I was. So I'm not, I am more of the sensible one and the problem solver. So, you know, if, if I've got something I'm stumped on, I'll, I'll do my best to try to figure it out, but I can always, I'll tell I can always call on him. I'll say, baby, I got an idea. I'm going to do something social media. And she was like, I'm not following you. I'm not following. I'll say, just run the, just, just trust me on the camera and, and now she's like i'm just gonna video and uh, but in her defense if she thinks it's it's too far over the top or something she's like ah, i don't know if you ought to say that go back but she pretty much now has just said hey if you if you envision it you do it that's what you want to do and we'll go she kind of trusts that but I, I don't know my mind races sometimes i have just crazy ideas i think i don't know maybe i need medicine sometimes <laughs> i think way outside see things different some things that really hit home to me is not what people probably think I think about. Uh, you know, I had a lady that was really uh, in Detroit last week and it just really stood out to me right in the middle of the elite series. You think that your whole focus would be depth finders and tubes and drop shots. And I'm renting a house and the lady across the road asked me a question and I said, yes, ma'am. She asked me another question. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, you guys enjoying your business up here? Yes, ma'am. I said, the weather's beautiful. I said, thank you very much. You have a great day. And she just stopped. And she looked me dead in the eye and she goes, where are you from? I said, I'm from Gunnersville, Alabama. She said, your mother and daddy should be proud. She said, somebody raised you. She said, I don't see manners no more. That's gone. And I told Lynn, I said, it really hit home to me right in the middle of that tournament that you mean to tell me that a thank you or a yes, ma'am, is so far removed from society that it stood out to somebody. Something that I wouldn't think twice about. You wouldn't think twice about. You, if, when you speak to your elders right now, you still say, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. I sure do. And I had a quick video. I'm like, really? I mean, we got to the point in time where saying yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am is noticeable. It should just be part of your life. So that, I, I see stuff like that, and I'm actually want to make a video about it, where she might look at that and say, I don't really see it. You know, that, that it's for worth, it's worth storytelling. But as a society, I think it hits home to where we're at. So I just sit down with my phone and tell a story that, you know, really, we should do better, me included, as a society, to be more polite to each other, love more people, hold wow. the doors. I don't think it's going to kill them. Well, that's another thing that I really appreciate about y'all is um, you have a big platform and you have a huge megaphone, and you and you um, you're very responsible with it. And I pre I really appreciate and respect that a lot. And um, Ooh, I might have to stop y'all. I'm about to cry. Um, we, you know, we've been through a lot together. All of us have. And, um, I, uh, 
we, we, we share time, girl. We, you know, I think that's what people don't understand. People say the key to business. I say, you know what, Leanne? And I say business is Angie. I said, it's either you're building a new relationship or I need to mend an old one that I have destroyed. And I said, well, we quit doing that. We're not good people anymore. And I said, yeah. if you, as long as you and I have, or as long as me and somebody at, at Phoenix had or something, you're eventually going to have a bump in the road. And if you can't keep that bridge mended together, then you're not doing your job. You're not. And I said, it's just relationships. And you experience these ups and downs with people. And, and you look back and he's like, man, we've had some good times. We've had some bad ones. You know, we've had some rough times. I mean, you and I have been together when things were bad, bad. Yeah. You know, with each other before. We've come back and hugged before. I've stayed in your home. You welcomed me in your home when you wasn't even there. I tell people, I said, it's, uh, it's friendships and relationships first. The fishing's just kind of. It's just hooked on the back. Yeah. You know, you, you know, that's what Jerry used to always say too. Jerry used to always say what he did. People thought he did a fishing show, but he was like, really, I tell stories. And it's just, it happens to be the fishing is the, is the backbone that those stories are told on. But really I'm not, a am not, I'm not doing a fishing show. I'm telling stories. And, um, and I know as tournament fishermen, you're definitely fishing and competing and you're a fierce competitor, but you're also a great storyteller. And that's what you do. I think the really well, and you, and you're one of the few that can weave in life lessons into those, that storytelling that really can help improve someone's life. I mean, I know it sounds corny, but it's true. We've seen that and I've been blessed so many times. And she said, you know, we, we got into this and just started fishing and it's grown and grown. And we started doing the PMA bracelets, just, just a positive mental attitude. Had no idea it would affect somebody's life, good, bad, or indifferent. And all of a sudden you start getting testimonials from people and you, then you realize I need to be more responsible. I do have, I do have a responsibility and, and there are people listening, maybe not many, but there's people that listen and you have an impact on. And then, but those stories is what I remember the most. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't remember exactly what I was fishing with at Lake St. Clair or Lake Champlain, but I can remember that lady in the street talking to me about, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I can remember the lady who beat a drug addiction who come up and hugged my neck. I can remember the lady at the Classic this year that her husband waited in line for almost 45 minutes to get my autograph, and he said, I wanted my wife to be here, but she got sick and had to go to the truck. I'm like, well, what's wrong with it? He said, well, she has stage four breast cancer and she's taking radiation. So mm. she had to go. Like, I'm like, you go get her. Go get her right now. He said, I said, you go get your wife and you bring her to me right now and stay back in this line. I still remember her and her face and her family. I don't remember a lot about who finished second, third in the classic. I know Hank Cherry won it, but it's just a bar. But for whatever reason, when I get in the car and drive home that day, that's the only thing I see. The weirdest things to me is what I remember the most about in tournaments, it ain't the big one that got away or the one I missed. It's something that I've seen along there that taught me a life lesson either to be more thankful for what you have, to be more responsible, or if you can make somebody smile, make them smile. It don't really matter how I feel at the time, how tired I am. And my wife's the best at that. She said, these people came to see G. They don't come to see pissed off G because he didn't catch them. So when you get in the truck, you can be mad all you want to. But today, they brought their children to meet you, and you're going to meet them. You know, and that those are the lessons that I think that I've learned so much more from not not the great technology of depth finders and how to wind a spinnerbait. It's the very simple things that people walk up to you and shake your hand and say, you, you've helped my son or you. And I'm like, I look back and I'm so humbled, Angie, because I still remember Beaver Lake. I still remember throwing a nail apron down and driving up there and winning that tournament. It doesn't, I doesn't, I don't see it any different. And she still gets tickled. She said, as outgoing as you are, when people ask you in a grocery store for an autograph here in Gunnell, she said, you still kind of get embarrassed. Because I don't see that side of what they see. Yeah. I just like fishing and we've been blessed. And now that she shares so much of that with me, she's been out there and she sees people and make me cry. we get <laughs> we get letters better. You know, I had, a, I had a sheriff send me a letter the other day and he said, hey, man, one of my best friends just got killed. Can you send me a brace? Like, Absolutely. How, how, what a simple thing. Mm-hmm. What a, It makes that big a difference, of course. We want yeah. to be a part of it. I, I tell everybody, I may not ever have 15 classic trophies behind me. I may not ever have an Elite Series win. But when it's all said and done, when I sit on my porch at that farm and I'll take my boots off, I'm going to tell all you I've had a damn good time. And I've, I've enjoyed things that most people would think they would have never thought twice about. 
you know, the things that I've got the biggest thrills out of has nothing to do with hardware or how much they weigh. It's just about the experience I had along just going there. I love it. Okay, well, I, this is a great place to stop for just a second more, and then we're going to come back. And uh, we haven't even gotten to you know a, a, a tenth of the things that I wanted to talk to you about, but I knew it was going to be this way. So we'll be right back on the Fishing Business Podcast. Okay. Do you know what your personal brand is? Because everyone has a personal brand. You may not be intentional about it yet, but all that you say or do or write or post contributes to how others perceive you. And that, my friends, is your personal brand. If you want to develop your brand and mean the things you want it to mean, I have a workbook that will help you get started and it's free. You can download my Developing Your Personal Brand Workbook at www.fishingbusinessschool.com slash brand workbook. We're back on the Fishing Business Podcast with Gerald and Leanne Swindle. And then this is our last segment. We got to go here in just a minute. But Gerald, how quickly, how does a newcomer, how does an up and coming aspiring pro, how does he stand out and get the attention of a sponsor? Uh, be yourself, uh, whatever you like, whether it's bending your bill or your hat crooked or flat, whatever you are, stick with it. If you don't believe me, look at Bill Dance. He's wore the same hat. And everybody, when you see that T, you remember. You know, so I tell a young angler, find out where you're comfortable, whatever it is. If, if you're comfortable in jeans and boots, wear jeans and boots, but wear jeans and boots. That's right. When it's self-rememberable in who you are, don't never fight. And then people will always recognize whether it's Seth Fighter with a mullet. You know, when you see a mullet, a Seth Fighter, prime example. You know, I say, I always tell people that you don't, you need to be more of you. Don't try to be somebody else. Be more you. We need more of you. We need your voice heard. And so a lot of times people will say, well, you know, I, there's somebody else that's already talked about that or that's already been done or whatever. And I'm like, but they hadn't, people hadn't heard you say it. They haven't heard your version of it. They haven't heard your voice say those things. And like, I'm going to I'm gonna talk about something pretty, that's kind of controversial right here. Years ago, and I can't even remember when it was, but you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The story got around that Jerry McInnes told all the pro anglers they needed to act like Mike Iaconelli. Do you remember that? And it was at an angler meeting. I believe, I can't remember exactly where it was. It seems like we were in Orlando, but um, we, I think it might've been the classic in Orlando. And um, Jerry had a, we had just started working with Bass. We had been with FLW for five or six years and we had just started working with Bass. And somebody had made an offhanded com comment to Jerry, like, um, you know, well, you've been with all the well-behaved anglers over there on FLW. Now you're going to have to deal with uh, Mike Iaconelli and good luck with that. You know, it was kind of a joke, but, the, but that kind of had meanness behind it, you know? And Jerry addressed the anglers, and, and I was there. And what I heard him say was, I'm excited about working with Mike Iaconelli. I'm excited about seeing his personality. And you all need to show your personality. Everybody needs to show more of their personality. Don't be scared to be you. Don't try to be Denny. Don't try to be somebody else. Be yourself. That kind of got misconstrued, but that and the, that that he had told everybody to act like Iconelli. But I'm here to tell you, with my right hand to God, he did not say that. He did not. I was there. Now, I did have Ray Scott call me in a hotel room at, at Old Hickory right when I first started and told me I needed to shave my goatee and wear slacks and look <laughs> like a young. Now I did have that happen, and you see, I still have a beard to goatee. Well, you know, Erwin Jacobs walked down the boat ramp one day and told Rick Clun he needed to cut his ponytail. <laughs> I think what that is is just people staying true to who they are. Yeah. You know, people they think you ought to look like, but you do what you're comfortable at. You know, that's right. It, it, that's where you're going to be the most uh, successful at. And it's weird how that story got around, but I didn't hear that either. I thought he would say, embrace who you are. If you, if if I can is wild and crazy, then be that. We need personality, but you be who you are. Right. You know, I've had well, angers before. That's like I don't have nothing to offer. I'm like, yeah, you did. I said, you ever just thought about telling them you just know redneck from Mississippi and you don't know no big words outside of gymnasium, but you can damn sure catch one on a jerk bait. I can try that one. Just never <laughs> tell the truth. You know, I yeah. can't break. I said, you let Ike be Ike. You let everybody else be, but you got to find out who you are and you got to own it. That's right. I mean, look, here's Gerald Swindle is a certain kind of guy that has a certain kind of fan and, and has a certain kind of brand. Um, Mark Davis is another kind of guy, but has just as many fans 
just as strong a brand, but he's uniquely Mark Davis. He's not trying to be Daryl Swindle. I think that's the key. Cliff Pace and I have had this exact conversation. I said, Cliff, if you would open up and tell people more about who you are, he's one of the greatest lure designers I've ever been around in my life. You know, he said, dude, I'm just no redneck from Pedro, Mississippi. Likes to chew tobacco in my mm-hmm. nose. I said, try that on stage next time. That's you know what? Right. Pedro, Mississippi likes to chew tobacco and make lures. Own it, brother. Yeah. I said, you, you person, you just don't want to say nothing. You know, I said, it, I just think that's what people want to hear. I said, I think it'd blow your mind if you knew how many people were just like clear inside. It was like, you know, I can relate to that guy. I don't yeah, have a lot absolutely. of fun. lures and crankbaits and play around with that. It's a fan base. Right. I coach a guy that's from a small town in Alabama and um, really all he wants to do, <laughs> he, he doesn't have any, he's a, he's a, mar- he's recently been married 10 years, has three kids, um, loves to fish and is passionate about it. Doesn't want to be a, a, an elite angler, doesn't want to fish MLF. He just wants really what he wants to do is figure out how to get somebody to help him so he doesn't spend so much money on it. So his wife's not mad at him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like, you got a story, you know, if you're, and he's a fantastic dad. I'm like, your story is, you know, you're a great dad who doesn't have these aspirations of, of going on the road half the year. That's your story. Get into that. Be more, let that be it. You know? His story is I don't want to climb the tallest mountain in the world. I just want to be king of the hill of my yard. I want to be able to catch him just good enough to pay the bills. Right. I don't, on that side of the mountain i just want to be that's that's a rare story that's told and there's a lot of men and women that just want to fish it up to pay the bills that's right just and there's a lot that do there's a lot that win you know that formula works for them leanne who is your favorite person or brand to follow on social media besides your husband i have two i have two going to be more of uh would you call her celebrity celebrity more of a celebrity style uh if you're in the outdoor industry you you might know her name samantha morgan so um levi morgan is her husband they are sponsored by matthews they do a lot of uh archery competitions that be the levi's won 12 or 13 or 14 world championships and he's only like 31 so that's archery he's won them every year since he was like 20 so he's like the most sought after archery shooter in the world, but his wife, Samantha, is funny. She is so funny. She's so entertaining and she's real. She's she's not a, I don't think there's anything fake about her in social, you know, from her raising her kids to making fun of Levi, trying to get him to dance on TikTok <laughs> to, he's very uh, honest about her beliefs about the election about yeah, I mean she's just very transparent I really like to watch her but I love as he touched on it a little while ago Jesse Wiggins uh Haley Haley if y'all don't uh, Haley is amazing and she, like he said she's not really trying to be she is so entertaining um she asked Jesse could she have her own fan page the other day because she caught a keeper in the Tuesday night wildcat at Smith <laughs> like you on social she said a fan page and he's like baby it don't work that way you have to catch some fish <laughs> I've, I've right. been trying to get her to name it Haley here hey hey Haley here you know but those are the two I look forward every morning to get on Insta story to see what their Instagrams are gonna are gonna say oh Haley. that's great yeah, I'll check are- them out. Well, I, I, well, I'll check them out. I tell you, somebody else who really is entertaining to me, y'all, and it's a very good friend of y'all's is Kay Donaldson. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, I don't think she. I don't think she realizes how entertaining she is. But I like. I can look forward to saying, "What is Kay going to do today? What kind of shoes is she going to wear?" She has some new boots on, and she wears some clothes. And I'm like, somebody asked me to see. Kay posts all them pictures. I said, y'all don't understand. She wears it every day. That ain't fake. That's no. what she wants to wear. That is her, yes. Hey, know, I don't laugh. have as many pairs of boots as Kay, but I might rival her as a second. <laughs> y'all talk, talk about somebody who's authentic. That girl is authentic. I yes. like uh, I like Rut Daniels, which is Kelly. Carrie. Carrie Underwood's husband. husband. He has an Instagram page called Rut Daniels. It's which like is an a, alter ego. Like uh, Marty DeShields had uh, Sugar Brumbelo. Mm-hmm. This is husband has a character called Rut Daniels, and he's a hunter with a mullet, and it is... Oh, that's great. I mean, it is fun. 
good. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my last question, what do y'all, I know y'all spend so much time, windshield time on the road. What do y'all like to listen to? What's your, uh, do you listen to, po- I know you like music. I hear a lot about your music, but do you like, do you listen to podcasts? Uh, okay. I do. I, I do. I like, I like, uh, like um, murder podcasts, like the, the true, true stories, crime. like the, I like those. Um, I really, really get into those, um, but. <laughs> I'm a music guy. Yeah. I love yeah. music and work. And like I'm big right now on the, all the new Corey Smith stuff that he's releasing uh, from his uh, YouTube video channel that's sitting in his studio to some of the new artists, uh, Tyler Childers and Justin Holmes and Heath Sanders. Some of these guys, you know, like my people may not have ever even heard of, but I just love songs that tell a story. Mm-hmm. And I do a lot of podcasts. I do just don't listen to a lot of that. I just mm-hmm. listen to music. That's what we like. I love Tyler Childers too, and I heard about him through y'all. I didn't know, and I didn't, I'd never heard of him, and I heard y'all talking about him, and I went and checked him out and just love him. I need to listen to Corey, Corey's new music. Corey Smith. I don't know. Corey was a huge, huge uh, smash like 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. You couldn't buy a ticket, Angie. You could not get in to see Corey Smith. He's from Georgia. He's just a single guy, like a single man. He had a band, but he never had a record label. He fought the system. They've done stories about him, like in USA Today, did a story. He's a four million year man, never had a record label. Well, it caught up with him. And he tried to read, and in his last album, the stuff he done in his YouTube, I, I'm like blown away that this guy sat down and wrote a song and told you just how bad he screwed up. He was so transparent. You you listen to the song and he's like, he told you exactly what he'd done, how he re-recorded his, his album. It sucked. He, it was a crap show. He lost all his core face. He's having to start over. You know, and the name of the song was Just Leave Well Enough Alone. And I'm like, this is an artist who's been up and down and up and down. And it even talks about Nashville told him, you don't have big enough biceps. You don't pull your jeans out. You don't have the pretty boy smile. You know, and he's like, I fought it. He said, I tried to prove him wrong. So I like that style of music. So Corey Smith mm-hmm. is one guy that I like, just really like sitting. And he writes some songs that are really, would make you think, there's one that I think you would absolutely love on there called uh, Highway 441. And it just, you just have to sit and listen to it. So I don't know. I like all that new stuff. I'm writing I'm, I'm that in. down. I'll go check him out and I'll put him in the show notes so other people can find him too. I'll oh, put all oh. these people that we've talked about in the show notes so you can find him, including Miss Kay Donaldson, because she needs to, people need to know more about Miss Kay. But um, I thought at the very beginning of the show, I asked you what, um, what was something that people didn't know about you. And, um, and I thought maybe one might be, I thought maybe Leanne might say it and maybe I'm making it up, but um that I think you could actually be a country music star, G. We, we like to sing in the truck with the radio. We sing water. together because neither one of us can really <laughs> sing that good. I so. told uh, I fished with Riley Green the other day, you know, a few months ago, and Riley's ended up being kind of a friend of mine through country music. He just won the uh, CMA uh, uh, yeah, uh, was, New Artist of the Year yes, or something. Yes. And, of course, he comes to the house, Lynn cooks dinner for him, and she, he, he gets ready to leave. And Angie, she looks at me, she goes, God, he is easy on the eyes. <laughs> 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 I tell him when he stand by him all the time, I said, son, I'm you. You just don't know it yet. But it's it's amazing to see some of those guys because I can remember him playing in clubs in Auburn. Yeah. You know, he's from Jacksonville State. He was a quarterback at Jacksonville. He played all over Auburn. All he, played through. Here in he played at Gunnersville. He's played at uh, somewhere on the lake at Gunnersville, Florida, He's been all up and down the coastline. And then to see him just take off, you're like, people make it. I mean, I see it in the fishing industry. But when you know somebody before they get famous in country and they blow up, you're like, dude, that's because I know what he does. You know, I know how hard he worked at it, how he writes his own music. Right. I think you would enjoy his music. If you don't listen to a lot of Riley Green, I think you would get lost in it, the way he writes because he's 30, but writes like he's 60. I'll, he writes, I'll listen to him, too. A lot of meaning, a lot about this is, you know, raising. And I think that's a really good story. He is a modern day. Him and Tyler Childers, Sturgill Simpson, some mm-hmm. of them guys, they are kind of the new modern day Willie Nelson. You know, they kind mm-hmm. of do what they want. Yeah. I love that y'all appreciate that because I, you know, I think mm-hmm. we all try to find, I think the happiest people are the ones that uh, try to find deeper meaning in things. I don't know why I'm so emotional, y'all, but, um, you know, there, there might be people that just go out there and, and, and they're fierce competitors and they don't ever think about a deeper meaning in anything. But I can tell because of how you 
appreciate things like country music that you know it's the stories that are important and it's the story that's what you that's what you're drawn to that's what you remember and um and it's the same for me in sports it's the stories in sports that I'm drawn to it's it that's the person that, that created the story and and I might have listened to a song the other day and it's by uh he Sanders and the, the opening line is uh Ozark gravel and an old warm dirt, an old dark gravel, an old warm boat, and a Zebco. And I said, honey, that's what my grandpa, we would ride down gravel roads in Mississippi, and I could hear the gravel still to this day pop under the tires of the windows yeah. down. Had the red worms, and we had the Zebcos, but that was life. That was as big as it got. So when you, when I hear somebody, a new part of an artist, write that down, and I'm like, as soon as I heard it, we were painting the how painting the porch, and as soon as I played it, I'm like, play that again. I said, play it again. I said, that's my granddaddy. That was, I remember the gravel. I remember the smells. So to me, to hear those words, I think when certain people hear them, it takes you back to where yeah. were a very refreshing piece of where you say, you know what? And it, it allows me to sit and we'll talk about my childhood, how my granddaddy sat on a bucket. And there was a line in that song that said, even if he missed his court going under, he didn't care. He was working with me. And I said, my granddad was the same way. He would throw his out. And it didn't matter how many times this court went under, he worked with me, mm-hmm. you know, that to me, he just painted my life as a nine and 10 year old kid in Mississippi. And I said, to me, that song is etched, you know, Riley Green writes a song. I wish grandpa has never died. It doesn't get any more magical than that. Yeah. You know, I wish old dogs never got old and gray. Yeah. Grandpa's never died. You think about that. What, what did grandpa's mean to everybody? You know, which is sad to me now because I see, I see grandpas that, that may not have that effect on children. Now. They're not even involved. So like as her and I get toward, you know, we're in the fourth quarter of my career. I look forward to the day when my grandchildren are old enough to sit in the deer blind with me and hunt. And I, she sends me pictures the other day where they're feeding the deer on the ground. And I'm like, that's life. They yeah. didn't get any. Then the experience right. they did grandmother feeding the deer because that's what they're going to remember. They're not going to remember all the Xbox games. They don't remember how many games they played on the iPad. They remember that Yaya and them cooked biscuits. And I think sometimes as parents and grandparents, we forget that the, simple, the smallest of things make the biggest impact on children. It also can do it in adults. But we get we get caught in the hustle and bustle, and I'm guilty of it. Like, I get caught in that hustle and bustle, and I'm going. And then all of a sudden, it takes that slap in the face where I'm like, whoa, 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 this is very powerful here. You know, we need mm-hmm. it. You got to stop and notice those times too. And, you know, that's the thing I've, I appreciate the most about this industry that we're all part of. If you're involved in fishing, you probably have some kind of rural roots somewhere. It may, you may not have been grown, you may not have grown up in a rural area, but somebody did, or you spent a lot of time there, or you've got some kind of, because you, you know, you, you, you're on a lake, but if you love fishing, you're out on a, on the water. And, um, there's something about those people that have those rural roots that are different from everybody else. And, um, and they are, they are real. And they, and those, um, those things that make you connect with that person is what makes this sport special in my mind. Uh, you know, like I said, maybe, maybe I'm just being corny, but that's, I'll never forget almost every year when I would go to the classic, I would have a moment in the arena where I would get really emotional because I'd be like, these are the these people that are here that are so excited. They are the guys I grew up with in Coffee County, Alabama. You know, they are the, the my cousins in Baldwin County. They and this is their lifestyle. They're this is a validation of their lifestyle. This is a you know, a, a public thing that says, look how cool this is the way we live. And it made me feel really emotional to feel like I was part of that and that I was, I was somehow helping that and making that better. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. I would, I would have a little, you know, come apart at the classic almost every year. Simplest of things is all I was saying that a fish brings the world together from gas stations to every environment, from the biggest city to the smallest gas station in Coffee County. Mm-hmm. A man can have an aluminum boat with four cane poles out of the back, and I can pull up with a, uh, a brand new Phoenix, but we have something in common. We both got the thrill of catching a fish, and we can talk and have a mutual respect for each other that we love fishing, and that's that's the magic I see in bass fishing. Whether you're okay. six years old, 
I go fishing yesterday and some kids slide in the gas station and everybody goes, man, we follow you on TikTok. We're down here fishing. Can we get a picture? Absolutely. Fishing brings the world together. It does. You're right. You're totally right. Y'all, thank you so much for, I know you're busy and I know I understand how busy you are. And, uh, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking this time out to spend with me. And, uh, it means, a, it means a, a lot to me. It really does. I, I, I want you to know it really does mean a lot. To me. I appreciate it a lot. No problem. Thanks for having we us We appreciate, on. yeah, you asking us both. I mean, I was included, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, lo I love you to death. I love both y'all to death. And, uh, and, I'm, and Leah and I respect the crap out of you. I mean, you've got, you're just as important a part of, of Gerald's success as, as, as he is. More. She's more important. <laughs> All right. Maybe I'll get a <laughs> All right. Love y'all. See you soon. Well, like I said, I'm sorry for the technical problems there, but I think you probably get the gist of everything. And I'm sorry for getting so emotional. I just love the swindles and we've got so much history together. I get all choked up talking about it sometimes. That was just love leaking out of my eyes, y'all. Okay, here's my three key takeaways from this conversation. Number one, try to find someone in your life who can help you manage the business side of fishing. As you start achieving more and more success, you'll need help keeping the train on the rails. Having someone to help you with keeping up with your social media calendar, your real life calendar, your speaking engagements, and your sponsor commitments will help you immensely. You may not need it at this moment, but you will one day because you are going to be successful. Number two, be consistent, but keep them guessing. What this means is post a lot, be consistent about when you post and when you share, but, but always be creative and come up with new things to talk about and, and to share. Number three, don't be afraid to be honest about who you are. We talk about this all the time, but Gerald is the personification of this concept. He is uniquely Gerald. And you are uniquely you. He doesn't try to be anything else other than an old country boy from Alabama. Of course, that's not who you need to be if it's not you. But you have a story too. Tell your story. Your version of life needs to be heard. And if you're not sure how to tell your story, I can help you get started with figuring that out. I have a free workbook called Developing Your Personal Brand that you can download at fishingbusinessschool.com slash brand workbook. I've got a link to it down in the show notes here. This free workbook will help you get started on creating your own brand that will sort of guide you to what your story actually is. Okay, that's it for me this week, y'all. Please be sure to rate and review the podcast on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. And I'll dance at your wedding if you leave a nice comment. I absolutely love hearing from you. In fact, you can also email me at Angie at business school, fishingbusinessschool.com. Angie at fishingbusinessschool.com. And like I say every week, if you like this kind of content and find value in it, I need your help to keep it going. You can help by subscribing and reviewing the content so the algorithms know that you find it valuable. You can also share my social media posts, which would be helpful too. I'm going to close things out like I always do. And like Jerry McKinnis always closed out his TV shows by saying, this is dedicated to dad. He always had time to take me fishing. See you next time, y'all.